Hello everybody, so today we're going to be doing some more NHL 22 and today we're going to be doing some drop-ins, alright? Uh, I use drop-ins as practice mode, I test builds, and I test out cameras. I, that's more like my experimental zone, if you will. I'm going to be showcasing a build, a new build, it's a butterfly build, in this mode. So you might think, you know, drop-ins, what? Like, wouldn't that make more sense to use clubs instead of drop-ins because drop-ins is so easy? No. Drop-ins is only easy really if you're a skater and you're a good skater um, and if you have a good team around you. So really it's not easy, especially for a goalie. I see drop-ins as the ultimate challenge. That's why I use it as practice. I see it as the ultimate challenge. You're playing with zero defense. You're playing with zero offense sometimes. Sometimes you get good teams, but usually no defense. And this is going to be the butterfly build. Now this is what I play for one, not one timers. This is why I play for close quarters and for things in close. Uh, the five hole is beautiful with butterfly effect. Sponge helps with rebounds. X-ray, I like having X-ray on. I like it. I can see. My goalie can see. Glove low, glove high, all that low is crap. Um, got 90 speed, agility pretty low. Um, the butterfly, this agility is the same agility as the stand-up, same speed and agility as the stand-up, so it, it feels the same. But butterfly, this one feels faster than the stand-up, but it's supposedly the same speed, but it does feel a little quicker. Rebound control, 92, because rebound control actually matters for a butterfly. The rebounds will still sometimes uh, not be in good spots, but that's because you your goalie can't always control the rebounds how they want to. It depends on where the shot is coming from. But if possible, they will rebound it to the corner. Like if it hits their paddle, it most of the time goes to the corner. It doesn't just go straight down in front of you like a stand-up build. 92 vision, pretty sturdy. Uh, low breakaway, low recovery, those two things are... I mean, recovery is only for when your guy makes a huge save. He, st he sits down and all of a sudden he can't get off. And breakaway... I mean, I say breakaways with this build, you don't have to worry about it. Alright, so this is the build. The reason I might give up goals is because drop-ins is more unpredictable than clubs. I can't stoop to their level, if you will. So, I might give up some stupid things, but that's me, not the build. You gotta trust the build. And I might do good this game, I don't know. It depends on my team. If the defense ain't there, then I can't be square. I also like drop-ins because it seems we can find games quick. See, right here. Uh, I'm gonna wait till they got a goalie though. I want a full game. Also, I wouldn't use this build if you see 1T in the golden category. If you see 1T on their team in the golden category for more than one person, if only one person has it, if there's more close quarters than 1T, then use the butterfly build. But if you see more 1T than close quarters, then use the stand-up build I showed you the other day. Um, this stand-up build that I showed is for one-timers and things far out, and it's way easier to be square with this build because it's more controlled, but the same amount of speed that I like to get across for one-timers and for cross creases. I don't know why we're not writing up. We can handle one computer. It's just one computer. It's not a big deal. All right, let's go. I do want to try and play well so I can showcase this build to the best of its ability. Because I know it's a good build, I just gotta play good myself to complete it. So, what I like about builds is that if you let in goals, I like a build where it's like, if I let in a goal, it's not the build, it's me. So, I, I know the build isn't bad. Sometimes I read, a, I read the play wrong and you let in a goal, you let in a couple goals, you will not save every single shot close quarters still you can save close quarters easier with this build but it's not 100 percent guarantee one t you can still save it but it's i recommend one t for stand up just pick and choose your judgment now how i'm going to edit this is probably just oh uh looks like they're pausing so i'm probably going to edit this in a way to where it's all goals and my saves. I'm not going to be showing a lot of my team's action. Mostly just when I make a save or when a goal is scored for either team. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. What kicking motion? Nobody's foot was even near. If this is called off, that's stupid. It might have hit the goalie skate. Yeah. 
I don't even know why that was an issue. Let's go. I'm glad we scored because on five on threes, if you, if your team doesn't score in a five on three, EA punishes you. And I know that's a fact. Sometimes EA doesn't punish you, but more times than not, <laughs> you get scored on after you don't score on a five on three. I'm, I don't know what's happening. Can I? The goalie is. The other goalie was trying to fight me. Not my fault. You can't make a save, bro. Don't don't put all your anger on me. I think there's been like four penalties this game so far. Oh no! My bad, boys. Oh. Oh, we almost picked that off. It would have been goal. Man, I get- I'm so mad right now. Like, why do I have to be on the good team? I actually wanted to be on the bad team so I could get one-timers and, and a bunch of other stuff. Instead of just these terrible shots. Like, what is this? Oh! One of the great things about this build is, um, the butterfly effect. You can stay in Butterfly a lot longer in this build and still be semi-safe. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you can't get up, and you know something is about to happen and you don't want to get up because it'll take too long, then you can stay down and the animations can save you. Alright, first period went well. They only had five shots, but I do want to look at their first couple shots. Right here was Butterfly Effect. You see the recovery? My goalie was still in mid animation and he could and he still recovered fast enough out of that animation to make another save when I wasn't even in position. That was butterfly effect right there. And the low agility. You gotta trust me, the low agility makes such a difference. Let me know if you want a long explanation for the builds. Cause I don't think I made a super in-depth explanation yet. Cause there is a there is a lot of things I haven't said that work but you're just gonna have i just said to take my word for it but i can't explain how everything works just let me know just let me know the comments are how we communicate hey let's go ah I hate those types of goals. Oh well. Well, three on one. What is the commentator talking about? The goalie wasn't even in the net. That was a really good play by them because I couldn't see that one timer at all. Yo, this is a blowout. We are blowing them out of the water right now. Yeah, their goalie quit. I think. Yeah, their goalie quit. <laughs> oh, we almost scored on him. Yeah, this is usually what happens. A human goalie doesn't do too well, and then they quit, and then we can't score another goal. So I'm happy we scored as much as we did. Oh, what? Ugh. I'm gonna have to look at that goal again. I think I overplayed forehand too well to where there was no animation to save that. I think what happened was I I overplayed the forehand so much. See, I could save that fine because I was square to the puck. I wasn't overplaying anything. Um, but with the other one, it was because I overplayed it and there was no animation that was good enough to save that shot from where I was standing. It wasn't a late reaction because I did hit it. My goalie did touch the puck. So it wasn't a late reaction. It was just there was no good enough animation for that scenario. I'm going to tell you why I speed boost. 
The reason I speed boost is because the higher in competition you play, um, the better plays are. So, let's say they pass it over for one timer. You might think it's a one timer, so let's say you butterfly slide. But then what if they hold it and then go to the other side? If they hold it and go to the other side, your momentum is already so, so far over to the other side. So if they hold it and then go for go forehand or go far side or whatever, and then it's going in. There's no way you're catching it. Um. Oh, hold on. What, what happened here? Yeah, I over. You see that? I overplayed it so much. Um. But anyways, if you speed boost instead of butterfly sliding, you still have enough momentum to cut back and if they hold it. So that's why I speed boost. But I butterfly slid there because I knew I wouldn't get there in time. If I tried to speed boost, so that was my only hope. So let's look at that goal. Let's look at how this goal went in. See him? See that? Yep. There was just no good enough animation for that scenario because it went. It hit me square in the armpit, and then it bounced right down and went in. Nothing much I could do. Nothing the computer could do. Really, if I was square to it, I guarantee I would have saved that. I guarantee you. Because you saw later, I faced almost the same exact scenario, except they were close, so it was a harder shot. And I saved it perfectly fine because I was square. Now, right there on that last save you saw me make, it was a two-on-one, so I go deeper in my net than usual for help on the one-timer if they pass. So that was risky. Because he didn't pass, he shot it. But because of my reaction times for my goalie, he could save it. I did have to kind of guess which side he was shooting though, because if I did stay perfectly square, it probably would have. I probably would have gotten sniped. So those are the types of decisions you're going to have to make on your own. There are no goalie tips I can give you for decisions on every single scenario. Those are the types of decisions you have to make on your own. Ah, uh, hmm. those are, that was just a really good pass in front and I couldn't react in time. That was a really good play. Pa he passed it right in front and instead of shooting it instantly, he held it and went forehand. That was, that was a really good play. See right there, that's what I was talking about earlier, I speed boosted over instead. And if I butterfly slid, maybe with butterfly effect I would have saved it anyway. But let's say I had my stand up build on. If I butterfly slid it might have went above because he did shoot it high. And since I stayed on my feet and stayed standing, I made the high blocker save. And. These are the types of saves I'm talking about. If you want to tell me after seeing this video that you think that glove high, glove low, stick high, and stick low, and agility all mean something to you and they do something for you, you just go off of what EA tells you and don't actually test the game out for yourself. Agility works, but not in the way you think. It actually, a nice goal, it actually only works if you put it way down. If you put it up, it disrupts your goalie from having a quick reaction. Because let's say you're moving, and then the high agility kicks in. It waits till you you stop moving to have a reaction. With low agility, that doesn't happen, and it makes a reaction. You're sliding in the wrong direction, and you're still making the glove save because the reaction time is there even when you're sliding. If you're gonna call for the puck, just just keep it, please. The game now one more shot nope that is the dropping game I'll set up now for a bit um because I usually lay back to concentrate I can't concentrate while sitting up like this I feel like no it's just too I don't get it but uh that's the build that's the build I use to play close quarters and to play other things it can still save one timers I don't know about one t in the golden slot yet that's for stand up
All right, so they had 17 shots and I made 14 saves. Not bad, pretty sturdy. I don't know what is happening. I don't know why it's not showing me the player summary like it is. Oh, we'll look at it. We'll see what my save percentage was. That's what I like to see my save percentage. Um, the player summary isn't available. Wait, where's my, did I get any RP? I don't care about my RP for drop-ins at all now that I think about it, actually. I'm a silver three because this is why, again, this is where I test out builds. This is where I test out things and then I, it costs me. That's why I don't test it in club games because I do kind of care about my club game ranking. So I can assure you that was the same build. That was this exact build that I was, so glove low, stick low, five hole. These two do not matter. These two do matter. Speed does things, agility. It says that uh, I can determine how quickly you change directions and how quickly you can make saves. That mean, that's nonsense. It actually disrupts how fast you make saves. Because the computer in its natural state with low agility, low glove high, all that. All this extra crap you're putting on your goalie is weighing him down. So when he's in his natural state, he plays perfectly. Uh, rebound control, all that was great. Now that is the build, um, you can adjust the speed how you want it, okay? Sometimes I do play on low speed, but I like the speed, it helps me with one-timers. This is about as high as I would like the speed while the agility is still low. 78 agility is about the highest I'll make my agility ever, alright? I don't want it any higher than that. So that is the build. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want another drop-in video with these builds. Because uh, that was pretty fun, not going to lie. I don't really record drop-in games much. But this was like my first time doing it. I'll see you guys next time in the next video. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And I'll probably just respond in the comments as well with an answer. But if your question is interesting enough, I'll make it into a video. Alright, see you guys next time. Goodbye.